Hey guys, just going to do another video on the domain controller situation. This time I'm going to just set up a second domain controller and promote it as a secondary DC. Usually I would not run a second DC on the same hardware, but for this example it doesn't really matter. So first up, I'm going to just quickly, as before, go new virtual machine, call it test DC2, select next, select generation 2, and give it some RAM. Select a virtual switch, give it a 100 gig hard drive, and select the iOS image. Next, finish. Now just double click on the DC, power on, press a button which I don't think I missed, select our time and currency, select our operating system, accept, next, custom. The only difference I'll do here, just because I spoke about it last time, I'm going to make a second partition. So I'll just make that one 80,000 megabytes. And select next. I'll just speed up the video so you're not sitting here waiting. Okay, as for last time, just enter a password here. Click the Control Alt Delete button. And we'll log in. Just going to give the network card a VLAN ID. And I'm just going to right click on the start menu and go to disk management. Find the additional little partition that we left left over and just set it up. Now we'll open up Server Manager. Just while that's happening, I'm going to set a static IP address on the server. So into Control Panel, if it ever loads. We'll just click on it. Change the view by to small, network and sharing, adapter, double click on the adapter. So, what was the IP address of our last one? Ah, that's actually got an address not from VLAN ID 800. So I'm just going to quickly do a restart. And we'll log in again. Okay, this time. We'll go back into control panel. Network and sharing, adapter, double click on our adapter. So we set up our last DC as 192.168.2.100, so we might do this one as 101. So properties, untick version 6, 
click on IP version 4 and click properties 192.168.2.101 and a subnet mask and then the same deal for gateway as before and we'll set the DNS server back to the first domain controller we set up close close Now I'm going to go to Manage, Add Roles and Features, select Next, select Role Based and Feature Based Installation. I better give the server a name first actually. So I'm going to exit that, go to File Explorer, this PC, right click Properties, Change Settings, Change. And I'm going to give it the name test-dc2 and I'm actually going to join it to the test domain which I think was test lab put in our domain administrator password select OK and I'll quickly speed up the video while it reboots again Control Alt Delete. Select other user. Make sure we're logging into the domain this time. As you can see, that's now gone to the local computer. So we'll actually have to put in testlab backslash administrator and then our password. Okay, back into Server Manager. Select Manage, Add Roles and Features. As per usual, I'm waiting for this silly thing. Okay, Manage, Add Roles and Features. Select Next, select Role Based and Feature Based Installation. Make sure we've selected our server from the pool. Select Active Directory Domain Services and add all the required features. Next, 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 install. And I'll speed up the video again. Okay, now I'll select close and select the little bang and promote the server to a domain controller. The main difference this time is we're going to add a domain controller to an existing domain. So I won't change anything and just select next. I'm going to set up another DNS server and a global catalog server. So I'm going to leave them as standard. And I'm going to leave the site name as standard and set a password. Next. Next. And now we've got an additional option which is saying would we like to specify additional replication options, replicate from. So we're going to select our, well we can just leave that at any domain controller. But if you needed to select one, you can do it there. Next. And this is where we're going to actually move these onto the other partition on the hard drive. So our second partition went as E drive. So I'm just going to update the C to E on all of these. And select next. Next one more time. Let the prerequisite check happen. and select install and I'll speed up the video once again okay it's now saying the computer is going to restart because it's 
has had Active Directory Domain Services installed. So close. And we'll let that restart. While that's happening, I'm going to open up TestDC, the first domain controller. And log back into it. Now what we're going to do is just have a quick look at c slash windows slash sysfile and then go into the sysfile folder and into testlan testlab.lan and scripts. What we'll find is that this is the area that you can put stuff like login scripts or icons for computers if you're going to change them, desktop backgrounds, all that sort of stuff. It's a common place that any domain user can read. What we'll also notice is that when this new domain controller starts up, it will have a replicated copy of this folder. So if we just create a folder in here called, actually we'll, we'll just create a test document called testing.text. And then we'll just flick back onto our other domain controller. And we'll log it in. Okay, on test-dc2, I'm going to open up the file explorer. Go to this PC. Browse to E drive. Windows, sysfile, sysfile testlab.lan and scripts. We can see at the moment the file is not there. I'm just going to do a Windows key R type services.msc. Just going to look for DFS replication and see that it's on. Okay, it is not replicating, so let's have a look at why. Just going to go to Active Directory Users and Computers. And just make sure that everything's looking as it should. You can see that our te test lab OU that we made last time has been created. And we can also now see that we have two domain controllers showing up. Just going to go into control panel. Small icons, administrative tools, and go to event viewer. Going to drop down application and services logs. Have a look in the DFS replication. And we can see that the DFS replication service successfully initialized the system sysvol replication. Now I'll just look back and you can actually see that it has replicated. It was just taking its time to do so. So now if I just create another one, we'll just see how long it takes. Oh, it comes across instantly. If we bring up both of the active directories and go to users, right click new user, test test, just give that one a password, and finish, we can now see that that client is also there. Interesting, it's actually showing up is disabled here but not on here. But I just pressed another F5 and now it has actually copied across correctly and now is active. 
So that is the short and simple way of how to promote a secondary domain controller. See you guys later.